Well, hello everyone. Good evening. Welcome to uh, our Tuesday evening Facebook Live. Uh, this is a series of Facebook Lives that I wanted to do uh, as we have been in everything that's going on with the, with the pandemic. We're all at home trying to figure out how to get through what we're going through. And I know that there are often some unique situations in all of our lives. So I want wanted to cover some topics that maybe you wouldn't necessarily hear in other areas of social media, kind of like this evening. So the topic that we're going to cover tonight is a topic, honestly, that's really sensitive for a lot of Christians. Uh, and so this evening, we're going to be talking with Rebecca Mitchell. And the reason why we're covering this topic is because it is a reality amongst Christian women. And so as we go through tonight's discussion, whether you're watching us live, so we're so glad that you're with us, or if you're watching this on the replay, uh, we are stepping into the reality of life. This is not a discussion where we want to heap shame and judgment and guilt on folks, but we want to walk into a topic that many of our Christian sisters have faced, are facing, and unfortunately will face in the future. And as I said, divorce, it can be a sensitive topic for Christians. After all, a husband and wife are supposed to be one flesh. Yet even in the church, divorce rates continue to be substantial. And women are desperate for biblically based guidance, encouragement, and hope. Not to sweep their pain under the rug and pretend that broken vows don't exist, but to know that complete healing is possible. And part of the reason why I want to cover this topic is because I fall into that category of women. If you've been on this page for a while, many of you uh, have been reading the blog posts about the tragedy that unfolded in our family and about how after 26 years of marriage that my husband didn't want to be married anymore and the devastation that it caused. My I'm Waiting God Bible Study, my Winning the Worry Battle book, and my Surrendered Bible Study all capture the difficulty of that journey. And yet, I can be here before you today and say, I don't understand why God didn't answer that prayer. But what I do know is that God is good, that he is faithful, and that complete healing is possible. And so tonight I'm excited that I get to talk with Rebecca Mitchell. Uh, Rebecca knows this pain of divorce personally. She went through every stage of grief after her marriage of 25 years crumbled. Rebecca's journey to healing led to the conviction that others could be helped in the same way. So Rebecca, she looked and just said, how can we have this engaged community apply biblical practices and compassionate, reflective practices. And so what came out of this is her book, it's titled Broken Vows to Healed Hearts. And so this evening, Rebecca and I are gonna talk about that journey. Her new book, it covers topics like depression and loneliness, forgiveness, and even joy. And so I am excited, friends, if you would welcome with me to Rebecca Mitchell. Uh, hi, Rebecca, how hi. are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me. Well, I'm so glad that you're here because this is such a difficult and sensitive topic and you've written about it in your new book. And this is one of those books that nobody gets excited about having to buy, mm -hmm. but it is absolutely vital. So we're going to talk more about your book in a moment. But um, from your experience, uh, what is it that makes it so hard for us as Christians to talk about divorce, even though it happens to so many of us? I think that we just didn't expect it. it the, the rug was pulled out from under us. We are faith, believing Christians, desiring to do God's will. And we're just, it's, it's like a, you know, a grenade in our home. And we struggle and we're afraid to be judged. And it, and 
and we are afraid of God's what God thinks of us. And I, yes, and I've learned a lot about what God thinks of us in this journey. Well, and we're going to talk about that in a moment. We've got some wonderful friends who have joined us. And so I'm flashing on the screen. Hi, Thank Jessica. You. Hello to my friend Robin. Uh, hi, Lori. Our friend Deb is on right now watching. Uh, and, uh, and my friend Robin says, hi, Rebecca. Hi, Robin. So in this new book, uh, you tell your story. And so first, tell us about your story. And, and then we'll talk about in a minute what compelled you to write the book. But tell us a little about your story. Well, similar to you, I was married for 25 years. But at the 22-year mark, I learned uh, that my marriage was in serious, serious trouble. And so for three years... I tried to repair it, um, but it takes two. And those I call the dark years because they were so, so hard. And I finally let go um, after those three years of trying and realized it was best just to end it. And um, so I have two adult daughters, they're adults now, but they were teenagers at the time. Very, very hard for them. Um, but um, but God is there and God has brought healing for all of us. Well, the women who are watching, um, many of them understand what it's like to walk through what you describe as a grenade. And there might be some women who are watching who have friends or they've got family members. Um, but let's talk about that grenade for a moment, um, mainly because I think that there can be this mindset amongst many Christians of, well, you just didn't work hard enough to save your marriage. Mm -hmm. So first talk about the grenade and then talk about what it feels like when um, when you're working really hard and praying really hard and really feeling judged about it. Mm. Well, it, it, I, I think I was a zombie when I when the grenade hit. I, I was shocked. Um, he, he was um, done with the marriage and moving on, but I had no idea. And, and so this was a heartbreaking to me that um, that I, I did not make him happy anymore. He was not attracted to me anymore. He did not want to be married to me anymore. And, you know, so so the person that is supposed to be your number one fan is almost like your enemy now as you go through this divorce process that is so um, you distrusting and you don't know what's going to happen next and you, and you don't know what to believe. So uh, it... it it was just devastating. And looking back, you know, at the moment I was angry. At the moment I blamed him for everything. At the moment he's the one that threw the grenade. But I understand looking back, there are things that I contributed to the health of the marriage. There are things that I could have done better. Yes, I could have worked harder, but I was ready to work hard and forgive uh, at when we were having those severe problems. But but it was already done. And it, again, it, I, I couldn't, you know, that's one of your, your number one principle in your surrender book, right? You can't control the other person. You cannot make that person stay or change or go to counseling. Um, so it was too late for that. And I think that that's one of the lingering, like the shrapnel in mm -hmm. all of it, uh, especially when we, when we really try to fight hard reconciling our faith that this prayer wasn't answered um mm -hmm. that i still get comments when people go well did you try hard enough mm -hmm. and i and i was kind of like well like i feel like the decade of counseling um <laughs> re um mm -hmm. like it's um it's painful to feel like that failure um when you think about shifting your identity from being married to single, uh, how did that journey feel for you? Because that journey, like that almost, that was almost unbearable for me. Right. I remember going to 
my first singles event at church, I felt like I had this big red S on my chest, you know, not A for adultery, but S for single. Uh, it was so uncomfortable. And suddenly I'm in this world and I noticed we live in a married world that things are in couples at church. So many times the pastor would go, how many of you are married? I hated that question. Stop asking that question. So it was just a, a real struggle to lose that part. And, and even today, I am in the group, um, a book club, for example, every single woman you know, has a man in her life, right? Uh, and so I struggle with changing that identity and struggle with loneliness at times, especially in the beginning, because that person wasn't there. And even though, you know, I kind of hated him for a little while, you know, you, you, you kind of hate and miss him at the same time. And the loneliness is there because the, you don't have a partner. You, you don't have somebody necessarily to ask how your day was every day. Uh, and so that is really a hard adjustment but it gets better. It does, it does. And so let's talk about your new book, From Broken Vows to Healed Hearts. Uh, you, why did you choose to write this book? You know, I was kind of stuck. I was so angry uh, and I was stuck in victim mode. And I realized I didn't want to stay there. Now I was pretty proactive. I got involved in groups and divorce care. I uh, was doing Bible studies. I was reading everything I could get my hands on, but um, but I was replaying the wrongs done to me, a little bit stuck in victim mode, and didn't like that about myself. And I was, as I was meeting other women in similar situations, I wanted to progress, and I wanted to help others progress too, because we don't have to stay stuck. And I and so I wanted to help as I was learning, I really feel like God was teaching me how to deal and go through this healing journey. And I didn't really feel qualified necessarily to write the book, but I felt compelled. I really felt compelled to share my story, to share what I was learning and to help others in the journey. I love that, that idea of not feeling qualified, but feeling compelled. Uh, none of us, I, I remember I was on staff at my local church for 14 years. And mm -hmm. for many years, um, I oversaw spiritual growth and development. So I'm from mega church world. And so I would support our divorce care team. And mm -hmm. I love the fact that our church has had, had divorce care for years. I just, I love that. And when the leaders came to me back in the day, I supported all of their groups when they had special events, like all of the things. But in the back of my mind, I kept thinking, but I am so glad that I don't have to go. And yeah. um, and I felt like this sense of whoo, better you than me. Mm -hmm. Then it happened to mm -hmm. me, and it is uh, that whole qualified thing. Like, um, I just love the idea of compelled. That mm -hmm. I just go on this side of life. I don't necessarily love how my story unfolded. But what I do want to do is live for God's glory in spite of my story. And if this, mm -hmm. is, spite, this is part of my story, then we're compelled to shine the light of Jesus' hope on it. Amen. Yeah. yeah. So, and speaking of qualify, or you're personally qualified or personally compelled to lead women um, through this process of seeking God. Like, was there a, a moment or a series of moments when you said, it's time for me to do this? Like, when did that moment go where you went, I believe that God wants to do something in my life? Hmm. Mm, it was pretty, well, I, I'm much more a process person, but I was riding my bike um, and it was, a new bike and it was, you know, one of those purchases soon after separation, like this is for me. And, and so I was riding my bike and I felt the breeze and it was refreshing. 
and I realized, you know, I need to be actively doing something to feel that breeze. I'm not going to feel it sitting in the garage on my bike. I'm, I need to get out and do something. And so I just was praying to God about, well, what is it that I need to do for me? And what are you calling me to do as part of my new identity, as part of my desire to, to help people in this journey? What am I supposed to do? And I kept getting metaphors because I, I love story. I'm an English teacher, so um, stories are great. And metaphors, I, I feel like God kept giving me these little stories and then I'd make the connection, the spiritual connection, the healing connection. And so I started gathering them and I have a binder still of these metaphors and they, they came together in a book of, after three years of work. <laughs> right. right, well, if, if, you could, if you could go back to Rebecca at kind of at the beginning, at, shortly after her divorce, mm -hmm. you could go back to her now and look her in the eyes and speak to her from the voice of compassion. What would you tell her? I would tell her that she matters, that she is lovable, that she is worth while that she's a delight. <laughs> uh, I love the verse where God uh, in Psalms, I think where God delights in us. So he delights in his children. And so I imagine Jesus saying to me, I delight in you. I am, I want you to heal as just as much, if not more so than you want to heal. And I'm with you in the journey. You know, this uh, one time, this person, this lady said to me, looked me right in the eyes and said, you're hopeless. And I actually gasped when I heard that. And she said it with such conviction and kind of disgust. Uh, it really took me aback. Well, that lady was me and I was looking in the mirror and I realized I need to work on myself, I need to draw close to God and feel his love and his delight in me. Whether, I mean, and that's a wound that goes deeper than divorce, that started earlier than divorce. And so in this healing journey, it's not just, you know, the divorce wounds, although those made things worse, it's going back to even, you know, previous wounds and just how I think about myself. So I don't say I'm hopeless anymore. I, well, like <laughs> I love I love that just that that you spoke the truth to yourself. So, mm -hmm. friends, if you're just joining us, I'm talking with author Rebecca Mitchell. Uh, this is her book from Broken Vows to Healed Hearts. And uh, we're going to talk about why this what's in this book that will help you on your healing journey if you've gone through the tragedy of divorce because Rebecca and I are both here to tell you today that healing is possible. Now, Rebecca, we have, we've got some ladies who've been sharing some wonderful comments. Uh, one of the questions I asked was, what are some of the hardest parts about being divorced? And uh, loneliness was an issue, the feeling that I wasn't lovable or worthy, uh, the club you don't want to join. And, and so those are some of the hard parts. Uh, for you, as you think about the people who you interacted with over the years, um, what were some what are some things that um, that people who haven't been through it need to know about those of us who are experiencing the tragedy or trying to heal from the tragedy? One of the things that I believe is that it's a long process mm. to heal. and everybody's process is different. Mm -hmm. So we all have, we had different marriages, we had different family of origins, we have different personalities and um, strengths and weaknesses and past wounds. So we can't go through this process in the same way. We can't do it fast. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and we need patience and grace and understanding and sometimes just your presence, not an answer, not a fix. Um, certainly not 
judgment, of course, you know, understanding and just grace. And we need to give grace to ourselves because we're going to make imperfect progress in this healing journey. And it's hard. This is honestly the hardest thing that I have been through. And I know that there are more difficult things, but this is, this is definitely one of the, my greatest life challenges so far. It, absolutely. I mean, in the, it in that one year span, uh, my dad and my father in law both died. Wow! And the divorce mm. was far, far more. And it and it doesn't take away from because I mean I had the best dad on the planet, mm. the best dad mm. on the planet. I had a wonderful father in law. Um, I believed it felt at certain points that the divorce was actually going to physically kill me. Mm. It, was so devastating. Okay. And um, and so there were some ladies in the comments who shared some of the hard parts. Uh, uh, Manuela said being alone, having to do everything on her own. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, Deb talked about the judgment of others, the divorce 39 years ago, the scarlet letter mentality was crushing. Uh, Lori talked about the judgment of others. Church was hard. One of the things that surprised me was um, how difficult it was for me all of a sudden to sit through church. And I was on staff at my church. Oh. I love my church. Uh -huh. And all of a sudden, church became really hard because I noticed couples with their arms around oh. each other. Uh -huh. I noticed them holding hands during worship. And I mean, and I am a local church woman. I love serving the church and church got really hard. But part of why you wrote your new book from broken vows to healed hearts, ladies, I keep showing the cover so that you can make sure to go grab it, is that you do believe in, in leveraging the power of community for healing. Absolutely. So talk to me about that. Okay. I needed... Um, community. I needed friends. I needed family. I needed support groups like divorce care. I did another support group that was specific to my situation. I went crazy. And then I had Bible studies and, and because Dude. it was, it, I, I, you know, the compelling part is part of it, but here I was desperate. I, yep. that was a lifeline. I knew I needed to connect. And yes, there were times I isolated um, and you, that, which didn't help depression but I I was trying to really reach out and I don't think that we heal well by ourselves. I think we need those other voices and at least we don't, and we heal more slowly. I think we need those people to lift us up in prayer and support and telling us you are beautiful. You're an amazing person. You're lovable. I just, I delight in you. And I, um, I often use the redwood tree analogy the redwoods are the tallest tree in North America, 380 feet tall. Their root system is, are, it goes 12 feet deep. That is not tall enough to hold up that tree. What they do is they go 50 feet sideways. And so they entwine with the other redwood tree roots. And that gives them the stability and the strength to survive. They wouldn't survive. They topple over without that hanging on to the other trees besides them. And I think that's what we need. That is the powerful analogy about why community is so important. And so talk to the woman out there who she has either going through a divorce or been, and you and I have both led divorce care. And so we, we get that. And like, that would be our very first choice of going, Hey, yeah. do some divorce care, uh, grab, Rebecca's book, again, From Broken Vows to Healed Hearts. Uh, the book itself is set up for group study. And so talk about what a group experience would look like with your new book. Since it's really under it like this. Yes, I've done it a, twice, I think, um, with the book, with the, uh, a group. And of course, now things are different, but I'm leading a different Bible study and we're using Zoom. So you could still do that. But it's set up for five days. So there's a letter from Jesus in the beginning of the chapter to you. Because one of the biggest things I learned through this process is Jesus's tenderness towards our broken hearts. And so it's a really tender letter to you. And then there are three days of um, devotions or devotionals 
And then the fifth day is a Bible study. And there are Bible study questions. So you could do that by yourself. But when I've led with the book, that's we come together, we talk about the first four days and what our impressions were. And there's journaling questions with each of the days. And then we come together and we do the Bible study day five um, and just share. And it's just, you know, it's so helpful with this book or with divorce care to know you're not alone, that those emotions, those struggles, those the battles that you have are common and other people are going through it and they're, and you're not weird. It's normal. So I, my friend, Jan, she lives in a new community and so she's struggling with community and mm -hmm. I wondered if she could do the book individually. Yes. Yeah. So. I, and I remember for me, part of the struggle was that all of my friends were married and, oh. <laughs> and even now 98% of my friends are married. Yet, as I started praying, God began drawing me into meeting women who had gone through sisterhood. And so it was, it was, um, it was a unique experience. Um, and, and actually probably something that I didn't realize I needed. Um, for a long time, I said, I don't want to be a part of the single club. I like the married club. I mean, I've been there forever. It's what I knew. And, and yet, uh, this is a reality. And so friends, if you're listening, actually next Tuesday, next Tuesday's Facebook Live, I actually have a family attorney next week yeah. uh, because part of what I realized in watching the news, um, well, not necessarily, I don't, I don't have a TV, but in looking online, uh, they said in China, now that their quarantine is over, their divorce rates have spiked. Mm -hmm. And so what I would, what I'm hoping is that first, for those of us who've been through the trauma, if the news is going to talk about it a lot, we're going to feel that trauma again because it's going to trigger us. But also the family attorney that I'm talking with next week, um, he's going to also talk about and go, okay, not everybody's going to listen to me, but here are some tips for those who are of how, how we can still like not have to end up here because um, when the scriptures say that God hates divorce, we all do who've been through it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like People mm -hmm. tell me, they're like, well, God hates divorce. I'm like, yes, I hate it too. Right. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Um, Manuela said it's hard to have friends who are happily married and she is single. Um, what is what are some encouraging words that you can share with some of the single women right now who are still on the road to the healing process? Can you cast a vision of what that looks like um, as as their healing journey continues? Well, mine is a little bit negative. The first thing is, um, yes, we might be around happily married couples, but to be honest, some of them aren't that happy. <laughs> to be honest, some of the some of the women are lonely in their marriages. So we we have to be careful not to compare our inside ache with somebody's outside appearance. So that's one thing. And the other thing is, you know, um, and maybe I'm well, I'm sure I'm fortunate to live in a community with a lot of singles. And I have made some very fabulous single friends, girlfriends, and we go on trips. We go to writers conferences. We have so much fun. And I have the freedom to do that, to spend money on that, to take the time to do that. And so, and I, uh, for example, I started trying to play golf. So that's just one thing that I really wouldn't have done if I were still married. And so once you get over the hump of the deep heartache and you start finding some new adventures and some new joys, then um, then the joy, you know, and of course your relationship with God and spending time and energy on that and on yourself and, and not having to worry about, somebody else as much, you know, there, there's a positive side. Trust me. 
Right. And I'm so glad you spoke those words of encouragement because I have been so surprised. Um, it took a bit to be willing to be involved in those relationships because I really didn't like being a part of team single. Mm -hmm. And I felt that if I developed friendships with single women, like I just, I really limited what I thought God could do. And these, these women that I have connected with, these are sisters. These mm -hmm. are women. And we're not sisters because we're all divorced. That's just what connected us. Right. But these are women that God wanted to bring into my life because he wanted to bless me. Mm -hmm. And so I had to be brave enough to, to say yes to say yes to putting myself out there, to say yes to showing up and being real with what mm -hmm. I had been through. Mm -hmm. And um, and even though it's not always easy, it's worth it. So yeah. uh, friends, today I've been talking with Rebecca Mitchell, her book, From Broken Vows to Healed Hearts. Rebecca, where can we find this book at? It's on Amazon. It's um, through, you can find it through Kriegel Publishers also and CBD if they're still delivering. I'm not sure what's happening with that. They'll get back into it here pretty yeah. soon. But it's definitely at, on Amazon. Yeah, totally. Well, friends, thank you for joining me this evening as Rebecca and I talked. Friends, as I have been posting her social media information, uh, please find her on French, uh, on Facebook at, at RebeccaMitchell.com or at Rebecca Mitchell on Facebook. You can send her a message if you've got any questions. This is a great time in this space while we are just where we're at. Uh, this is a space, especially if you attended my webinar, you have an opportunity uh, to plant seeds of hope, to plant seeds of healing, and to plant seeds to help others. This might be a healing season for you. Mm -hmm. So please go on, grab Rebecca's book, From Broken Vows to Healed Hearts. There are, this is a space where you can plant those seeds of healing. So Rebecca, thank you again for being with us this evening. Thank you so much for having me, Barb. Wonderful. Well, I am glad that you've all joined me. Come back this Friday at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'm talking with my friend Lynn Cowell, and we're talking about how to be a woman of confidence when you walk in a room. <laughs> Good night, everyone. Thanks again for joining us.